and the speaker about your request that he stop the investigation? Um, I did have a response to my letter from uh, that I sent to the speaker. Um, I do not believe that uh, he answered some of my questions. In particular, I um, had some very significant questions about what the process would be. Um, as I mentioned in my remarks, I think this was a sneak attempt. Um, while the press was informed, even as uh, the motion was being made on the floor, Representative Burnell was not. Uh, a hearing, as it is noticed in the calendar, is scheduled for this Thursday. And uh, to my knowledge, Representative Burnell, and I know certainly um, I have not received any information about um, who the committee will be hearing from on Thursday or uh, what kinds of actions will take place. I definitely did not get the impression from that letter that there was any intent for this uh, to end. But so that's the sum of your communication <coughs> with the speaker. There hasn't been any efforts to, I mean, one criticism that, that, that he made uh, in the wake of the letter was, I think he said something to the effect of, we're not gonna engage in a letter writing campaign, we're not gonna engage in a media circus. Has there been an effort to you know, reach out orally, you know, in private to sort of smooth this? Uh, I actually had an appointment scheduled with the speaker last Thursday. It was canceled. I asked to have it rescheduled. I am still waiting for that appointment. And Josh, I do want to point out too, um, usually when someone says, I don't want this to turn into a media circus, it's because they've started a media circus that's gotten out of their control. Remember, when this motion was being made, there was a previously prepared press release being passed out by the House Republican office. They had a press release. They knew this was happening. They were prepared. They had a press release that they passed out. That was the creation of the media attention to this matter. It wasn't anything that any of the Democrats did. It was an action by the Republican majority with a press release from the Republican, major Republican majority office, followed up almost immediately, I should note, by a press release from the New Hampshire Republican Party. And then, on Friday, when Speaker O'Brien issued a press statement saying, I don't want this to be a media circus, he then issued a letter to Terry Norelli that he then released to the press. So you can tell me what your thoughts are as to the seriousness of Speaker O'Brien's concerns about media attention. I think, as I said, it is because the media attention he created has turned around and is not shining favorably on him. Yes, Mr. Norelli, in your letter you mentioned that this could potentially go up to the courts. Under what circumstance do you see, think it will go to the courts? Um, well, I, I think that uh, Kathy Sullivan has certainly outlined that there is no constitutional basis for uh, these actions. Um, should the uh, House go forward with this um, and actually uh, remove Representative Brunel, uh, we will not stand for that. Terry, they, they do, they, Initially, in the press release, they did point to an article of the Constitution where it would seem to give some merit to the argument that there is at least a potential for a conflict. Uh, I'll leave that. I would say, unless uh, you look at it in the light of when it was drafted in 1792, and, and I'll actually defer to uh, a lawyer in the group to address that. Yeah, I mean, basically, <coughs> there's two points on this, probably more than two points, but I'll just try to see two. The first point is, the motion that was made questioned Representative Brunel's qualifications. The qualifications section of the Constitution are contained, and I believe it's Article 14, and they refer to residency and how long you've been an inhabitant of the state, and does not in any way refer to the provisions of Article 7, which is not a qualification section. And so what they have done is they are trying to take a square peg and pound it into a round hole. But this is not an issue of qualifications. And so when they passed this motion to question his, his qualifications, that was, that was just totally incorrect. It has no constitutional basis. And they, in fact, cleared Representative Brunel's qualifications to serve in office when he was sworn in. So that even if there was an inkling, or any, any small scintilla of a basis, which there isn't to what they were saying, 
They weighed that. They knew what his job was. They knew all that when he was sworn in, and they never questioned his qualifications. But more importantly, it's not an issue of qualifications. Secondly, secondly, Article 7 refers to a situation that was taking place in 1792. It's not well known, but the general court originally at that time served as an appellate court. It actually sat as a court. And there were lawyers who were presenting appeals to the legislature, who were members of the legislature. So they were acting both as advocates and they were acting as judges at the same time. And that was something that the people felt was incorrect. And that is why there was this amendment passed at the Constitutional Convention, the Fourth Constitutional Convention in 1792, to prohibit attorneys from acting as both advocates and judges at a time when the legislature was acting as an appellate court. And if you go back and look at the, the history on this, you will see that actually there was an amendment filed that would have prohibited lawyers from serving at all in the legislature because of the fact the legislature acted as an appellate court. However, that amendment was defeated and instead, um, then Speaker Plummer, who was the fellow behind many of the amendments that were passed in 1792, pro uh, proposed this amendment which would prohibit the, um, the fact that uh, prohibit any further actions by lawyers as both advocate and judges in the general court. So if you look at both the plain language of the article, plus you look at the history, which I have, and this is not just me talking, I have spoken to two of the leading constitutional authorities in the state of New Hampshire on the New Hampshire Constitution, and when I told them about this last week, they immediately started handing me copies of articles and saying, go look here, go look there, because this is ridiculous what is being done here, it's obvious, that the speaker and also uh, the members of his leadership team, such as Representative Riazzo, Representative Betancourt, Representative Mursky, are making a major mistake here that is not based in any way on what is actually contained in the Constitution. I'll that answers your question. <laughs> <laughs> actually, obviously what happened in, in, in Tucson is still very raw, but it, it criticized the, the overturning of the ban on, for weapons. And the argument he made now more than ever that lawmakers and have the right, should have the right to, to you know, defend themselves and carry them into the suicide. Well, I certainly think that the United States Supreme Court agreed that, um, that there are a few places where uh, reasonable restrictions should be allowed, and among those are in schools and in government buildings. Um, I think it's quite sad and distressing what happened in Tucson. Um, I, for one, am not more or less concerned about my personal safety um, for that reason. In New Hampshire, we have very liberal gun laws. Uh, we also had in place what I think was a very reasonable restriction for the past 40 years of no weapons on the House floor or in the gallery. Um, and I must say that I'm at a loss to appreciate why the first order of business had to be to uh, overturn that 40-year ban. That being said, I think that when it comes to the incident in Tucson, um, it points out that here in the United States, uh, we have a lack of understanding, I believe, um, and a lack of available services for um, those in, among us who have mental health issues. And particularly at a time when we are looking at deep cuts to budgets, um, we should be mindful that our mental health system here in New Hampshire is already strained through the lack of funds. Um, and this is something that